Well, <laughs> I usually have commentary uh, while the horses are going. I actually like, I might do it both ways um, from now on. I usually do tell everybody how they went, but uh, I like the fact that you could home, go home and digest what I saw also. Not just what I saw with the horse I was going with, but the other horses and, and talk to the people how they went. Now, I'll preface this by saying James McDonald never buys shares with the stable. Most of our riders don't. I mean, they're, they're there to ride. or Our trainers don't. From time to time, uh, Mary will buy a, a small piece of a horse or Harry or whatnot. Or somebody. But never this early. And I looked yesterday, and I get all the receipts when you guys or anybody purchases horses. It'll tell me who bought them and if it's private from who. If not, uh, when they bought them. James, excuse me, James bought shares in Braemar and Eternity Road yesterday. Just food for thought for all you guys Never said a word to me. He told me later on when I called him on it. I said, hey, I see you were shopping. Uh, you were shopping at the stable. He said, yeah. He said, that Braemar Colt. You know, at the start, we were looking to geld him because he had a bad, not a bad attitude, but he was very, he didn't trust anyone, right? Very self-conscious. And he could get dirty if you tried to shove him around. First day we broke him, kicked the jog cart. To, you know, didn't break it, but kicked it to pieces. Kicked the apron, come flying off. And he'd say to yourself, geez, he's mean. You know, he's a mean horse. He's not. You know, now we have bandages on him, and this is why we're waiting. This is the first time this ever happened. The reason we didn't take those OCDs out three weeks ago was because you couldn't put back bandages on him. Obviously, when you take the OCDs out, you have to be able to bandage up his hind legs. Can't leave them open after a surgery. So we literally had to wait until we broke him to bandages. And um, now he's fine. He's just a kitten. James loves this horse. He goes with them all the time. And he said, geez, you know this horse? He's a really nice horse. And he went with him yesterday. He said, this horse could be could be something else. And I said, I know. I know. That's why we're taking the OCDs out. And that's why I'm not castrating him. You know, the reason they castrated Vegas Vacation. <laughs> Look at Ollie. The reason they castrated Vegas Vacation was because he was mean and broke everything. And I think uh, maybe a little bit like this guy. This guy's come around now. He's a kitten on the track. Walks out the burn now up onto the track. George, is, George McGuigan takes care of him, does a great job with him, you know, has bandages on him now behind. Just now he's where we need him to be. My only concern was, geez, do I put him on drone day? You're never going to see him look sore. He looks fine. This is a proactive approach to taking the OCDs out where I'm more worried how he'll look in July, August, September, because I think this is a fast horse with a big engine, and we know that there could be a potential for some problems there. So we're going to nip that in the bud right away and take those OCDs out of Braemar right now. I'd like to maybe go with them on drone day, so I want to talk to the surgeon, who I know very well, uh, talk to Natalie tomorrow and say, hey, would there be a problem with canceling our December 5th and using our December 16th booking for, for this colt and training him on the day before we bring him? Is there a problem with that? And uh, I'll know tomorrow. If she says, yeah, I'd rather not, then so be it. We'll, we'll take the, the OCDs out. I mean... Um, kind of in my head I'm thinking to myself it's kind of being a little bit selfish right wanting them to go on drone day but uh, on open house day but I like to show people what we got also right I'm proud of the fact that we bought Braemar for so little money uh, for such a small and meager amount of money considering his breeding I, I, I take pride in that also and um, anyway so James bought Eternity Road in Braemar yesterday there's 30 shares left in Braemar and, um, you know, for those of you that are waiting or whatnot, the cost of that OCD surgery will go on those share prices. All the training up until the first of the year will also go on there. So if you're looking to get involved and saying, well, I'll buy them later, <laughs> you're not skirting the prices. So, <laughs> so it is what it is. But um, I suspect this is a cold that will be sold out soon enough. So we'll start with the first set, which Braemar was in. Um, all week I've been hearing from Mario, all month I've been hearing from Mario, how talented Cut the Line is. Better than Cheddar Philly, sister to Brush Cut. I haven't been able to see her on the track. So it's only been third person, I'm telling you, because I heard it from him. But I got to see her yesterday, and he is 100% correct. Man, oh man, can she pace. He moved her like three times in the, in the mile. And we came a last half in 21. I didn't want to tell anybody this. but And I didn't know it. None of us had a watch. And I didn't want to. And I tell you guys, I don't care about the time. I just want to see the horses do their work and do it well in hand, especially this time of year. Just have fun. I want to see them do it right and have fun. And they were yesterday, and one of our uh, clients was at the fence now. 
it's hard because it's not a true half mile. It's a hair short of a half mile. That's why you see those three poles at the start, start, half, finish. So he said he got the last half in 121, the last half of a mile we went. <coughs> but we were pacing, so he could have been correct, yeah. So Braemar looked great, looked good enough that James bought shares in him, and just a fantastic looking colt. I can't say enough about this horse. Um, for those of you who are going to message me in June and say, I wish I had a bought into Braemar, this will be I, I, your I told you so moment right here. Braemar is a nice colt, does everything right. And it's just a very talented horse. Feels you're worried about the surgery he's about to have. Uh, the complications are zero. Um, you know, we've had multiple OCDs taken out of horses over the last three, four years. Never, ever had a problem. This is, as I said, proactive. When you look at this horse, you'd never know there was anything wrong with him. This is under x-ray. They said there is a couple of, of calcium fragments and deposits in those hind ankles. We can take them out. There'll be no problem. That's why we're doing it is because you don't see anything now. It's at a very high speed. You might see a wrinkle in him. And I expect him to get the high speeds. And I don't want to see any wrinkles. So we're going to take those out now. And then um, head that off the pass, so to speak. We're going to, we're going to be out in front of it. So Braemar look good. Broadway roll. How good does this filly look? The only thing I hate, and I have to tell the trainers all the time, and I'm going to tell them again this year. I want you pacing through the turn after the mile faster than you went under the wire. I hate when they let the horses pull up in the turn like that. It really annoys me. And I know the Broadway roll, Steve just let her coast after the mile. It's not a big deal. It's a long year. But at the same time, uh, when it's not done right the first time, it's always a problem, right? This was their first training trip. So I just have to talk to them about that. He wasn't the only one. I noticed no free lunch in Danny, although no free lunch was just castrated this week. We'll give him a, a pass. But at the same time, I need to make it very clear all the time. I want them pacing through the turn faster than they went under the wire. I want them, one, to negotiate the turns well, and two, I don't want horses to know where the finish line is, so to speak. They'll figure it out soon enough in their racing career. I want them pacing hard the entire time we ask them to while they're training. So Braemar was good. Broadway roll, really talented filly. She's small, but man, oh, man, can she ever rock. She's a nice filly. Cut the line, looked tremendous also. Mario was right. She looks some kind of good. Gray is the new red. I didn't get a chance to talk to Disco about her. He only moved her once, but she can really pace. These racing hills got a lot of talent, and they got some kick to them. And Gray is the new red. I don't usually tout gray horses. You know, they're pretty. They're nice to look at, but I don't usually tout them. Gray is the new red. It's a really, really nice filly. Momo. I went with Momo, and I told everybody two days before. I just let her scoop for three-eighths of a mile a few days before, and I said, this filly feels like she's going 25 right now. I think she could. Her, you saw her make a break at the wire. It's just because her hobbles are still long, and she was just pacing out of her skin. I'm not pulling her hobbles in. I'm going to leave them where they are and just ask her to pace a little bit less. But she likes her work, and she is built for speed. Momo was really impressive. Danny liked no free lunch. This horse was recently castrated and really didn't get a chance to get going the same time the other horses did. I thought he looked good. I thought he did his work well. I'm not going to come on here and wow you with how every horse looked great. i got to be fair. And I thought no free lunch looked good. Thought he did his work well. Danny was very happy with him. Another horse that looked good, first glance. Made a little break in a couple of places. This is a colt that's fast. Again, his hobbles are out a little long, but we're not going to start adjusting their hobbles just yet. They're not trying to, we're not trying to make speed with them right now. We're just trying to get them to understand their work. And I was happy with the entire first set, first glance included. Second set, uh, Adrenaline Rush. We're going to have to work with this guy. I know a couple of clients said to me last year, they said, you know, we always look for one word that you say. When you say lazy, I get concerned. And you shouldn't. I mean, there are some lazy, listen, there's some lazy trainers, there's some lazy grooms, there's some lazy people that work at the restaurant. That doesn't mean that they can't have their day in the sun. And although Adrenaline Rush is a lazy animal, he was freshly castrated also. And I think it'll take time to get that guy moving. He's got a great gait. This is a sister, a brother to um, uh, Miss Brampton Beast. And she could be a little lazy and hanging at times. So Adrenaline Rush, just need to work on this guy. Sunshine in May, the little open filly. I said to Todd, I said, in hindsight, I think you're almost as big as the filly. We may have to opt for a different driver. <laughs> Todd does a good job, but Sunshine and May is a tiny filly, and he's all over the track with her, and she's trying to learn, and whatever. She's happy on the track, and she likes doing her work. I certainly wasn't concerned with Sunshine and May or Todd yesterday. Philly, um, this is a filly, another one. Really tiny? I can't, I don't know how they'll be, right? Um... Our girl Capistrano was really tiny when we broke her, and she was a fantastic animal. Uh, so small isn't always uh, an indicator. 
um, of talent. But anytime you see a really tiny horse, you're like, geez, you know, how far is she going to get? We won't know till June, but I know one thing. She can really pace right now, and I'm really interested to see how she's going to turn out um, throughout the year and hopefully into a racing season. Desperado looked good. Uh, Disco usually goes to Desperado. I think he went with her yes went with him yesterday. Uh, he's got a nice a nice gait. This horse, you know, he's one of those horses I think is going to fly under the radar. Tell you who he reminds me of is Sunshine's Finest. He looks like him. He's got the same gait as him. Kind of just flies under the radar, and you'll see him zip by. And you're like, geez, that's a good-looking horse. And that's kind of how Desperado feels to me. Uh, Keystone Raven. That's a filly I went with. Now, a client of ours had bought uh, all the remaining shares of her the other day. And man, oh man, she's got a lot of talent. She can be a little moody sometimes, I noticed yesterday, but she can really pace also, and I was very, very happy with Keystone Raven yesterday. Rito Sunshine, Mario said, his hobbles are too long, and J Danny said that he was sick this week, so I just went easy with them. I said, listen, they weren't sick sick. He had a high temperature of 102 or so for a couple of days. You know, it's not like he had diarrhea. It's not like he wasn't eating and drinking. The horse is fine. He's an athlete, and if they're on the track and they're under the drone, they're moving. And I hate when they just go out and follow along and finish way back. They're like, oh, he did everything right. No, he didn't do everything right. When you teach them not to do it right, you may as well be teaching them wrong. And I do not like when they just go around. So uh, I know that Mary was just trying to protect the horse yesterday, and maybe his hobbles are a bit long. Lots of them were long yesterday. That's not the reason. That's no reason not to get the horse up in the action. So I was a little bit, little bit frustrated with uh, Rito Sunshine, but not the horse. More or less, just the the trip that he got. But that's not the end of the world. He'll have many, many trips between now and June. Brilliant corners. This colt is very green. He doesn't know a whole lot. He was gelded on Thursday. Danny thinks quite highly of it. I'll give you guys a little heads up right now. Brilliant corners is a horse that is a brother to a horse we had called Utopian. Utopian wasn't a great horse. He took a mark of 56 at the Meadows. He wasn't a great horse. He was okay, but he was sick. He was behind everybody else. And really, it just came to a point when the sale date came up. And I said, listen, I can't win a gold. I can't win a grassroots with him. All he is is a, is a maiden horse. So I think that maybe uh, we should sell him. And we did. And Utopian, in, in all fairness, I'll be completely upfront, probably didn't get the best shot he could have at the stable simply because of timing. And I made the decision that he wasn't a stake horse. He wasn't a horse that we needed. So let's just move him along. And we did. So um, Brilliant Corners is his brother. Now, Brilliant Corners was supposed to be sent here, broke, uh, hobbled up, and then sold on Standard Red Canada just to create some capital. And I was gone away at the sales. Danny broke him. I got back, and he said, don't sell this horse. I said, what are you talking about? He said, this is the horse that you said was going on Standard Red Canada. He said, I wouldn't do that. He said, this is a nice horse. Now, this is a better than Cheddar. I got a good look at Cut the Line. Cut the Line is a really talented, better than Cheddar Philly. And Danny swears that Brilliant Corners is a really, really nice colt. So now he's a gelding. So we'll see uh, how this progresses. So uh, there's been a stay given to his sale. Uh, on Standard Break Canada, and we'll see how he progresses over the next few months. But Danny swears this is a nice colt. He certainly has some kind of nice gait. He said the hobble's on like four days. He's been castrated. He hasn't had a great week, but he, he certainly looked good the other day, um, yesterday, under the drone. And then Surreal Love has been fighting illness a couple of times throughout the fall, but man, oh man, he's got a beautiful gait too. We castrated him um, just because he was a, a Heston, or he was a so surreal. He was getting a little warm. So we just thought, you know, let's let's take a couple of logs off the fire right now, so to speak. And we uh, we ended up castrating him. And I think it was probably a good move. So Surreal Love uh, went good yesterday, has a great gait, and I think has a lot to offer over the next few months, but we'll see. Then we went to the third set. Now the third set, I'll start with who I went with and who surprised a lot of people, including James. So James said to me before, we know, Captain's made, uh, We this is the filly we bought. Now this is, now let me just set the table for you. Captain's Maid is a Captain Treacherous sister to um, Sunshine and Shade. Half-sister by Captain Treacherous. Now, Sunshine and Shade is a Sunshine Beach. Let's call a spade a spade. There is quite a wide berth between the suspected breeding of Sunshine Beach. The him is a sire, and Captain Treacherous is a sire. Let, let's be fair. A wide berth. And uh, you would think that if we paid $22,000 for Sunshine and Shade that a Captain Treacherous sister to him 
And the night she sold, in fact, about 45 minutes before she entered in the ring, James came first over and was second in 54 in the mud with Sunshine and Shade. And they announced that at the sale, but she had a hernia. And you know, I always tell you, when horses have issues at the sale, whether they be curbs or OCDs removed, people take note and sometimes they walk away because there's so many horses to sell. And a lot of the time, those horses will be undersold. And that's exactly what happened here. We bought Captain's Maid for $25,000. And we got her home. We didn't break her, but we broke everybody else. We fixed the hernia and uh, got her broke, got her hobbled. Canter, canter, canter. She just wouldn't pace. Neither would Sunshine and Shade when we first broke him. And if you guys remember, have a good enough memory and remember Sunshine and Shades. Uh, when you remember Sunshine and Shades yearling video. Hi, the buddy. Side of your, that side of your car is frozen. It's frozen. I appreciate it. I'm going to try and fix it. No, that's all right because it's just going to get more rain on it. Or you just go right ahead. So, um, so uh, yeah, for those of you who remember Sunshine and Shades yearling video, it was horrible. He just ran the whole time. He just ran around the whole time. And um, this filly here, I think it was just a, just a lot of things culminating in, in what I would suspect and what I believe was a grossly underpriced filly. So we bought her, we got her hobbled, she wouldn't pace. You know, we changed her shoes around a little bit, she paced a little bit. So we're going on the track yesterday and James says, why do you have this filly in the drone set? And I said, she's been good all week. I called a couple of people and one of our clients had bought a significant chunk of, a 20% of, of Captain's Maid and I like the filly. I'm looking at her breeding, I'm looking at her, um, I'm looking at her breeding. I'm looking at her attitude. I'm looking at the issue she had. She's going to get better. Relax. He says, well, she hasn't. He said, I went with her uh, Monday and Tuesday and she wouldn't pace. I said, well, I went with her Wednesday and Thursday and she did. So we'll see. So she went out and dusted them. She paced one, two, three, four. And when I put her in gear, she really paced hard. All we did was she just had a normal set of full swedges. For you, those of you out there, it's just a shoe with a crease in it. That's called a swedge. So the full swedge is a, is a crease all the way around. Now, to get pacers to pace, sometimes you'll put a half round half swedge on the behind. And that's a shoe with the half of the crease on the outside, and then the inside part is round. The reason being it widens them out because a lot of the pacers, when they won't pace, they're up on top of their quarters, their front quarters, and, and they get cross firing, and they won't pace. You put a half round half swedge on them, they'll pace. We took it a step further. We put a half round half swedge with a little extra piece of shoe at the back called a trailer, and that again helps them. And this was the first day she wore those shoes, and she went out and, and really put it on them. And I'm pulling up, and James says, well, I guess she's figuring it out. And I said, it looks like one of you is. <laughs> So, uh, Captain's Maid was very, very good in her set. Very happy with her. The Fat Cobra is another horse that was making breaks, and Mario went with them, and I said, listen, they're going to tell you he makes breaks. He screwed. We pulled his hobbles in a little bit, changed his shoes. You're going to like this horse. He did make one break, but he was really good. Mario pulled up and said, he's a nice horse, this horse. I said, I told you that before you went out. I said, well, do you think I lied to you? What would be the point of me lying to you? about how the horse is. So the Fat Cobra also was very good. Well and down, you can see how talented she is, but she is a goof. She bounces around and up and out, in and out. You can see finishing up, she was gonna go by me with um, with Captain's Maid, and she ran sideways and Disco scooped her up. It's kind of like a car when you hit the shoulder. You can't overcorrect. If you overcorrect, you're gonna end up in trouble. And um, it's exactly what he did. She ran in a little bit, Disco panicked and grabbed her quick and she made a break. If he had it, rather than grabbing her this way quick, if you just straighten her, just straight, use the other line, just straighten her head out and let her see that there's a horse there, she'll likely correct herself and drive on and Disco grabbed her and panicked. She made a break, um, but she's fast, fast, fast filly. Um, horse that also I thought looked really, really good was uh, Roy Hill. Roy Hill was castrated last week, this horse that needed to be castrated. A little cranky, switches tail all the time, but big, big ass end on him and a really strong colt. So I've been very, very happy with Roy Hill. Uh, Danny put one big move on with him and then he kind of just let him finish up, which annoys me, but whatever. <laughs> we did that. Uh, who else? Set the mood. Jason said he was good, said he was pacing good. We had an ear hood on him because he's a Heston blue chip. He can get a little warm. Jason said, I wouldn't put that ear hood on him to train. I said, well, we're just trying to teach them and I want to make sure he does it right. So, um, 
So set the mood was very, very good also. So admirable. James loves his filly. Now you're going to see her make a couple of breaks, and this is not the last time you're going to see her make a couple of breaks, but she is really fast. James really likes his filly. I do too. One concern is she's always sick. She always got a lot of mucus. Um, so we've put her on some immune boosters like humans. You can't really tell if they work. I'm going to get her some oral stuff also that we can give her every day just from the tax shop, you know, probably garbage that they sell the saddle horse people that is no good, but at the same time, we'll put it on, you know, and that's the thing is that, you know, here's a one liter jug of some sort of liquid that should help your horse's immune system. Really? Okie dokie. Good feed, good hay, uh, and exercise will do more than anything most times in this filly. I just, but I do want to help her. And we are to a position where uh, I don't want to put her on antibiotics again. I want to keep her on uh, some decongestants to help with the mucus because I think it's mostly in her airway and up in her, up in her head, so to speak. Hi, baby. Hi, daddy. So, um, we do want to put her on some, some decon, keep her on some decongestants. Maybe what we'll do is, uh, how you doing? Maybe what we'll do is, hey, what's today? Daddy's birthday! <laughs> um, he is 46. 46? you talking about, girl? 43. <laughs> so, uh, we're going to put So Admirable on some of that stuff. Just see if we can get her cleaned up because she is a super talented filly. No, I'm right here. This is so admirable. So she's a super talented filly with a Rose lot of. Shh, I'm doing this. Well, a super talented filly with a lot of pop, and we want to make sure that we can keep her healthy. This isn't the first horse like this. We just need to find the right combination of of. I lost uh, my tooth. Did you? Good for you. Uh, just the right combination of stuff to help her uh, combat okay. that. Once we get her back going properly, good job. Once we get her back going properly then we'll be fine. Rose Run Wanda looked terrible yesterday. She just had that curb cry out and really hasn't got back into the swing of things yet. This affiliate's got a nice gait and a good attitude. He He's just trying to knock the ice off the car. Okay, I'm trying to do this. So, um, Rose Run Wanda didn't look great yesterday, but trust me, she's got a nice gait and a good attitude, this filly. Just wasn't a good day for Rose Run Wanda. Better's Hope was just castrated four days ago, and I know that Danny had told Steve to go easy, which I don't have a problem with. Better's Hope has been going good for a week. Uh, we almost didn't castrate him, but then I said, you know what, let's, let's castrate him. He's a small better delight. I think there's no reason not to castrate him. So he was castrated four days ago and he went yesterday. I was happy in the video, the way he paced, the way he did it was good. There's no shortage of speed and talent. Uh, just bad timing for the drone for him. It was four days after. So we move on. Set number four. Cambridge Star was one of those horses that had a high temperature, so he didn't get to go yesterday. I went with War We Welcome. Now, I will call it right now. Uh, I'll be completely upfront with everybody. We have a lot of talent in the stable right now, and there's a lot of horses I'm about to tell you about that maybe you didn't know about or maybe you didn't watch that I personally think have an abundance of talent. War We Welcome, I think, I'm not going to be putting top 10 lists up this year this year for quite a while, well not in 2019, but I'll be putting them up in the new year as we go along as we always do and if I was to make a top 10 list, I suspect War We Welcome will be on the top of that top 10 list for quite some time. This is an extremely talented filly. Now you saw her make a couple of breaks yesterday. She wore a Murphy blind on the inside and had a curb crowd two weeks ago or 10 days ago. Um, she's running out. She doesn't need that Murphy blind anymore and if you notice where she made the breaks, it was right in the heart of the straightaway where if she was running out away from that Murphy blind, that would cause her to make a break, and that's exactly what she did. So no fault of her own. If you watch her go, you can see what I'm talking about. She has got an incredible amount of talent and a big, big engine in her. So War We Welcome uh, was impressive yesterday. Another horse that was ultra impressive that beat War We Welcome, and I don't know if he would have had I not made a break, but just a really, really talented colt. Can't deny my spirit. I told you guys about the Southwind Spirits, and the people that are watching the Ohio horses closely are now catching on. And I, I told you when we bought them, we were after a son of Muscle Hill. Southwind Spirit is a son of Muscle Hill, and the horses he threw, man, oh man, can they dance. Can't deny my spirit. Can go as fast as any horse in the property on the property right now, and I suspect anywhere around right now. Can't deny my spirit. You can't deny his talent. He has got a big big engine in him. Another horse that was ultra impressive yesterday, Girls with Swirls. Sweetheart, what are you doing? I know, thank you. Girls with Swirls was really, really good. This affiliate we bought off the uh, on-gate auction 
uh, Amy loved this filly and we bought her and she can really dance. This you can see. Shh, Ollie, 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 Ollie. Can you not kick my vehicle? What? You're kicking the car, sweetie. Yeah, so I break the ice. I know, but you might you might do more than break the ice. You might dent my truck with my car with your big foot. It's all right, the ice will come off, sweetie. Don't worry. I can go through the car wash and get it. Hey. <laughs> uh, so girls with swirls just a ton of talent and I don't have to tell you that you can see that with her holy chick just just been a breath of fresh air the two least expensive horses on the training center are two of our better trotters right now Please holy make no mistake hey Ollie Shh. make no mistake uh, holy chick can absolutely fly and the other filly I'm talking about we'll talk about in a minute her name is Mama Knows Best, who was also very good. So Holy Chick trots very, very good. Another filly, one that I'm watching closely for another reason, is I'm a lovely lady, and I'm a lovely lady I'm watching closely because we have both our broodmares in full, the My MVP, and this is a My MVP filly. She has got a ton of pop to her. Mario, I said to him yesterday, I said, you're gonna like this filly. He went, he said, gee, she can really go. I said, yeah, she, she's a really nice filly. So set number four, I was thoroughly impressed with everybody that went in set number four. Um, so we'll move on. Set number five, won my heart, Hanover. Uh, I put the hobbles on her. I'm gonna take her over to the vet. She runs right in the middle of the straightaway and looks like she protects her left hind just a hair, but I think it's because she's touching. So we can change that with shoeing and with tweaking her hobbles and her headgear. We can change that. I wanna make sure that we're not changing something that we can't change. What I mean by that is, what if she has a little OCD in her ankle or her hawk? that we can take out. Then we have her exactly how we need her. We just need to take that OCD out. So we're gonna have her checked and looked at, but man oh man, this filly is smart. And the one thing about her that the, she has going for her, that the, all the other Sebastian Ks we had isn't, she's not hot. She's not sharp all the time. She listens. When you watch, this is a filly that was never in a set before, ever. And when you, two weeks she said the harness on. When I moved her first over, she went like she wanted to attack. And then I just snugged her up, easy girl, and she just settled right away. None of the other Sebastian K's did that this year, last year. So they all wanted to go, 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 go all the time, which is great. But having that extra intelligence, that brain power is important also. And One My Heart Hanover just looks like everything I wanted in the filly I wanted. And she is a, a uh, I've said this with the other filly, but a real breath of fresh air to know that a horse that you picked out, a horse that you wanted, that you got, looks as nice as you want them to look. It's a good feeling. And one my heart, Hanover, certainly fits the bill there. GW Chrome, you can see how talented this colt is. A little hot. He can get a little wiry sometimes. He's just going to have to learn to chill out. And I think that will just come with experience. And James said the same thing. He said, man, this colt can fly. I said, I know. We just got to put a head pole on the inside of him. You got to get him in a group setting every day. I want him in the middle of a pack. I want him to hear horses going by him. I want him to see a helmet in front of him. I want him to sit on the outside. I want him to relax on the front. These things are indicative of work, practice. So GW Chrome just needs lots of practice. Walk on the moon, look great. Wayne went with him yesterday. The only thing about him too, like the other filly. Uh, oh, thank you. Yeah, I'll have, a, I'll have the one I got the other day. Yeah. I'm in my driveway talking in my car and Amy's in her truck. She's gonna go down the road and get me a drink. Starbucks is literally at the end of the street. Give me time to finish up my set lists here. So, uh, Walk on the Moon, much like so admirable. Um, always says discharge and then head cold. So we're just gonna work on that. Put them on, uh, there's a medication you can use called uh, Extem. And we're gonna put them on Extem and then we're gonna buy some of that oral stuff from the tax shop. That, Likely tastes great, but I don't know how much good it does. But we're going to put them on that and see if we can't uh, get them coming around. Because once you get them on the right track, you know the you know the 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 workouts all the time. It really puts them on a structured way where their body uh, their body comes around, right? I don't think this is something that'll stick around, but it's something you want to nip in the bud now. You want to get them back to normal, back to square one, um, so that we can get them on track. So walk on the moon. Uh, looked fantastic yesterday. This is a brother to a horse that was in the Breeders Crown and uh, won the Super Final in um, in uh, what's his name? Moonbridge. His name was Moonbridge. So walk on the moon. Look good. Try to tease me. Acted up a little bit at the start yesterday. Another Southwind Spirit though. You see how hard she could trot when Danny put her in gear. He really likes this filly. Another one's just going to take some work. Uh, she's a bit of a goof. 
Did you get that thing from the kitchen table for your truck? Can you grab one? I bought a holder. I don't like this phone holder. It's always falling off and shaking around. And I bought a new one. I'm going to put it in your truck for when we're driving around here in a minute. Um, so try to tease me. Look great. A glare AM. Little curb left hind. Sasha made a couple of breaks. Trust me when I tell you, this filly is as talented filly as you're going to... What is he doing? As talented a filly as you're going to see on the property, I think, for a while. She can really, really dance. And I saw when Mario put her in gear a couple of times, she just put a step in and rolled off. Probably that little curb she has left hind. We're going to take care of that this week. Mama knows best. I see in one, uh, I see at the start of the drone yesterday, Disco ran right into the back of somebody with Mama Knows Best. She just shook her head and kept trotting, <laughs> kept trotting. She's got a lot of talent and a lot of pop, this filly. As I said, both her and uh, Holy Chick, the two most least expensive horses that we, um, that we purchased this year are two of our better horses. And Mama Knows Best certainly looked great again yesterday. So again, another set I was very happy with everybody. Moving on to set six, I'll give you a little info. Can't muscle me was sick this week and was off for four days. Five days. That drone set session was the first time she came out of the barn in five days. And I almost didn't go with her but I said, you know, we're only going slow and I'm, I only used her for a quarter of a mile. And if she looked lethargic on the track, I was simply just going to come off the track. But she didn't. She had her head up playing. She actually kicked the apron right off the cart when she first came up. She kicks a little bit that filly. She'll stop that eventually. Um, she doesn't like kick to hurt anybody. She just, she's feeling good and she just kicked and broke the apron. And uh, I just followed along yesterday and I really put her in gear down the lane. She was flying the last, well over an eighth of a mile, last quarter almost. Uh, she was really dancing. She made a break halfway down the lane, but I think again, just over trotted herself. And, and I allowed her to and I shouldn't have, but she looked really, really good. Carry a big stick, get that kind of goofy look to him behind. Mario said, oh, he's just a little warm. No, he's not. He's not just a little warm. The horse is a little choppy behind. I'm going to change his shoes this coming week and maybe put the hobbles on him. If he's going to be hot, fine. That's all right. He can be hot. We can put the gear on him to stop him from being hot. And um, if he wants to, we can wear some hobbles. But he'll trot and carry a big stick. I wanted to go with him, but I just couldn't fit a spot in for... And this happens every year. You guys know this. I can only go with one in every set, obviously. And I, uh, I wanted to go with Camp Muscle Me. And uh, just couldn't go with Carry Big Stick. So Mario and Carry Big Stick, he looked good. He looked good finishing up after he got him thawed out. But um, I want to see a better gait on that horse. So we're going to make a few little changes with him. Miss Meringue looked good again. And I know a lot of people are just saying, geez, you know, that was an expensive filly. And, you know, uh, we want her to look like some of these other horses. It takes time. She's a big girl. I'm going to put the hobbles on her next week. The same as Rosa and Why Not. She just needs a little help getting that confidence, right? And really what you see in a lot of these breaks going slow is just a little self-confidence. So we're going to put the hobbles on her and get her back in gear properly. Perfect record. Look good. He was another one that was sick last week. Needed some time off. Sweet Ambitions has figured out she is really good at trotting and she likes it. At the start, she was really tough to break this filly. She was a bad bugger and she was really acting up and uh, now she's perfect and looked good yesterday. And then obviously we slid a pacer in there. I didn't have a spot for beef and cheddar or a driver for him yesterday with all the sets. So we put him in with these tr with this trotting set and you can see how green he was. This is the brother, the better than cheddar brother to need your opinion, big, big colt. She was a small filly. This colt here can really pace. You see when Danny, Danny got angry at him and hit him a swat and he was flying. Uh, and I was finishing up with, um, uh, with the other filly on the end of a camp muscle me and Danny was gone and this colt finished up really well looked really good really happy with him this set was a little bit of a mixed bag we had a number of mistakes made in the set but at the same time overall looking at the set you can tell there was some really talented horses there I'm gonna be back in just a second I see we're getting up near 34 minutes I'm gonna be back in just a second with set seven eight and nine be right back <laughs> 